everyone, thank you so much for joining this edition of Reline Live. I have two uh, previous presenters with me today, so I will call them experts at it, being hosts for Reline Live. Um, I have Ryan McCasklin with uh, Contact Engineered Solutions, as well as Don LeBlanc with DL Views. Um, we are going to be talking about a couple of different Contact products, specifically A2 Liner, as well as Duramax. This is a, I think I might have to go look, a record-breaking Reline Live attendance for registrations, which is pretty exciting. Um, so I know a lot of you during the beginning of COVID got used to us doing these once a week. We're really, uh, we're starting to get really busy, which is great news. We're going to kind of start staggering these every other week. So you can expect to see announcements coming from us. Um, keep letting us know what topics you guys want to hear about. It really helps us figure out what to present. A uh, couple housekeeping items and I'm passing off to Ryan. I am a moderator. I'm going to let these guys handle a lot of stuff. I will be filtering questions. I will be interrupting when I think it's necessary based on what you guys are asking. So use that questions box, um, use the chat box, either one. I do have a couple of handouts already loaded if for each of the products we're going to be talking about. You guys can download those whenever you want. We're going to try and keep it at 30 minutes, but if it's going well and we're keeping uh, keep getting questions, we're just going to let it roll. All right, Ryan, off to you, AT Liner. <laughs> Thank you, Cassie. You're uh, welcome. to be here today. I appreciate uh, everybody jumping online, learning a little bit. Uh, Contact as a whole has has 14 Reline products. Uh, today we're going to talk about two. I'm going to focus on A2 Liner and then Don afterwards is going to talk about Duramax. And, and these two products really complement each other very well uh, because of their sizing. So uh, A2 Liner, as you can see on the screen here, is available in sizes 12 inch to 36 inch. And then Duramax is, is available from 30 inch up to 120 inch. So really where, where one drops off, the other one picks up. And that's what I mean by saying that they complement each other very well. Uh, focusing on A2 liner, this is a derivative Cassie of our, of our A2000 product, which is really a sanitary sewer product. Uh, the derivative being at the bell and the spigot. You can see in the picture here that uh, we have changed the bell and spigot so that we have a constant OD and a constant ID, uh, so which is extremely valuable in the in the reline world. Um, just a little thing about uh, uh, PVC and, and polyethylene. Uh, there's a lot of people who think you know plastic is plastic, and that's just not the case. Uh, what makes PVC great is that it has uh, far better long-term and short-term. Um, mechanical and material properties uh, versus polyethylene. But on the other side of that, uh, that comes with some negatives too. So if you were to put this, install this in the cold, uh, that, that increases the brittleness. So, so installation in the cold could be a challenge. Uh, there are some things that we can do to overcome that. So it, it shouldn't be something that really uh, forces you to look away from, from A2 liner, uh, but, but the, it, just want to point out the differences between the two different materials. A um, couple case histories for you kind of gives you a good idea of, of what what we're talking about here. Cassie, this one is is almost in your in your backyard. Um, Utah DOT uh, right off of I-80 at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Uh, basically, uh, the the pipe itself the the original corrugated metal pipe was was installed prior to 1997 uh, but it was lined in 1997 with a2 liner uh, you can imagine the salt flats with corrugated metal pipe uh, when that original structure was installed it was installed with the best technology at the time uh, which was was uh, bituminous coating but uh, over the years, uh, obviously that salt uh, did some damage to that, to that corrugated metal pipe, just as it would do any other non-plastic material. Uh, in 1997, uh, the DOT came through and installed uh, A2 liner inside those, those uh, corrugated metal pipes. And the pictures that you're seeing here are actually pictures from a site review in October, 2019. So a little over uh, a year ago, uh, we went back and took a look at it. And you can take a look at the picture in the lower left-hand corner, 
and see that while there are salt deposits on that structure, the structure itself is, is just fine. Uh, so almost one of the worst imaginable uh, situations that you could be in and, and A2 liner is performing extremely well. Just like Duramax, A2 liner is, is made for um, high, highway live loads. Uh, so we have minimum and maximum heights of cover uh, that, that need to be followed. Uh, just like Duramax, uh, A2 liner can be direct buried too. So if, if you're trying to line a portion of your pipe and then extend it, you can just extend with the existing, uh, with the liner pipe as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, Ryan, on this project in particular, what type of grout was used? Do you know? Or what grout would you guys have recommended being used? I can't speak offhand to this specific project, but the grout that we're looking for has a minimum compressive strength of, of 300 PSI. Uh, we really want something, and, and Don knows this as well, we're looking for something not from a strength perspective, but basically to transmit loads back and forth between the host pipe and the new pipe. Uh, so it doesn't need to be very strong. Uh, I always like to say a milkshake consistency or an aerated grout uh, works extremely well uh, for this and for Duramax. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that's great. I was just curious. Yeah, no, it's a great question. And, and really, uh, we get the grout questions more so than the actual pipe questions. Uh, most of the time. So uh, one last uh, case history, and I really like this case history because it shows the shorter pipe lengths. Uh, a lot of times the only access you have is through a structure like shown in this project here or, or through a manhole, and you just don't have the ability or, or access to an inlet or outlet. Uh, so we can make shorter pipe lengths. Uh, in this case, we, we made them four feet long, but we can make them 30 inches long. Obviously, that increases the prices because we have more bells and spigots. Uh, but uh, so we want to make the pipe as long as possible. But at times, when you only have access through a structure like this, you can. Uh, that's that's what we're limited to. So a question that just came in with A2 liner: Are is bell and spigot the only type of joint that is manufactured on this liner pipe? It is, uh, and, and specifically because there's really no need to have any other type of welding or anything else. This this bell and spigot is uh, yields the same type of results that we get with our A2 A2000 pipe. So it's a sanitary sewer grade pipe uh, and, and bell and spigot. So uh, the only thing that we've done is we've changed the bell itself. So we have a constant OD uh, across the entire length of pipe. Any other questions on A2 liner? Cassie? Yes, we do have another question. Um, is A2 liner a pre-made product that can be purchased quickly in an emergency job situation? We can usually get something to you within a couple weeks. We don't have a lot of um, uh, smaller sticks sitting around. As a matter of fact, I would say we don't have any of the smaller sticks sitting around. Uh, if we could take some of our inventory from A2000 and just and just uh, alter the bell and the spigot as necessary uh, if you need something um, quickly. Uh, but the shorter sticks, no, we don't have anything because those are uh, those are made per project. Uh, last question that I see on A2 liner. Let me know if anybody else has any. Is can this pipe in larger diameters be ordered with grout ports pre-installed? We have not done grout ports pre-installed that I am aware of. That's not to say we haven't done them elsewhere, uh, but usually the grout is installed for, uh, via grout tubes instead of grout ports. Uh, every job I've been involved with with A2 liner has been installed that way, and I am not familiar with any pre-installed installation of grout ports. So in, in yeah, as other questions come in, uh, we can we'll address, address those course, at the yeah, end. So. Yeah. So um, normal sticks would come in 20 foot lengths, and then we could do anything down to 30 inches from there. So uh, perfect for the storm sewer applications, sanitary sewer applications, and culvert applications in that 12 to 36 inch range. 
Ryan, would you say there's a particular type of project that A2 Liner wouldn't work for? I know you and I talked about it a little bit yesterday, but just to address it to the group, um, in your perspective, like a specific kind of project, you can give us an example where A2 Liner just wouldn't work and we would say, hey, there's other liner products that would work in that situation. Well, it works really great in manhole to manhole or culverts um, where the deflections aren't aren't uh, beyond you know the the five to to ten percent. Anything beyond that, where you're going to have to ram a pipe through, I would say that probably a two liner wouldn't be the the best option for that. Um, uh, you know, so, so usually in sanitary sewer we don't run into that. Storm sewer we don't run into that. Sometimes in culverts though we will run into that. Uh, so you know, having a good assessment of, of what's existing uh, is always the first step to a good reline project, regardless of what product that you use. Uh, you don't want to be digging, uh, you know, kind of rubbing your head when you've when you've got pipe already on the ground and trying to figure something else out uh, once it's too late. So, yeah. Uh, Great, I am gonna pass the controls over to Don. Let me introduce let me introduce this real quick, if you would, and and then yeah, and then Don has some case histories that he's he's had, which are very interesting. Um, the perfect complement to A2 liner when you move up is in diameter is is Duramax, and the one thing you want to remember with Duramax is that the steel carries the load. If you remember anything from this presentation, that should be it. Uh, it the polyethylene carries the steel, so it provides a waterway wall and it provides the durability. But in reality, from a structural perspective, uh, the steel carries a load. And, and why that makes a big difference is because we're able to use the consistent structural characteristics of steel uh, versus that of the dynamic structural characteristics of plastic, PVC or polyethylene or any other type. Uh, so that allows us to use larger diameters, in this case up to 120 inch. Uh, it also allows a, a very relatively thin wall, which is ideal for reline applications. So Don, I think you've got a couple case histories. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thanks, Cassie. Um, so we have another A2 liner question that just came in. Do you want to maybe do that right now while Don's kicking off his? Sure. Okay. Well, A2, we sort of addressed it similar to sort of what I brought up. Will A2 liner handle angular deflection? If so, how much? It, yeah, it can handle it. It just depends on what length of pieces that we have. So yeah. we're going to use uh, shorter pieces if we have any type of deflection along those lines to help us get through that. So, uh, but how much is going to depend upon the hydraulic requirements that we need. So if you've got a 42 inch pipe, existing, uh, we got six inches we can play with a void. Uh, if that's not enough, we may have to use a smaller diameter. So it, it's hard to say uh, top hand exactly um, what the limiting deflection is gonna be, it, it all depends. So that's why I would say get us involved early and we can walk, walk you through the state for that specific project. You know what, Cass? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this. I'm actually gonna email this to you, it's all right? Okay. Well, so while I take care of that, I will talk about Duramax a little further. <clears throat> um, so Duramax, as Ryan suggested, is uh, structural properties of the of the metal, of the steel, while you have the abrasion and corrosion resistance of high density polyethylene, which makes a fantastic product, especially in culvert and in sewer applications. Um, I have a little piece here I can show you. Right, this is a little seen me and Cassie talked about before. So there's literally the steel rib right here, and it's completely encased in high density polyethylene, right? So this would be your soil side or your grout side in a reline, and this would be your waterway side, which makes for a very smooth 0.012 Manning's coefficient. Um, forgive me while I email this to Cass. Uh, but and and Ryan on the uh, on the A2 side, that's a similar Manning's coefficient, right? 0 0.009 for A2. 0 0.009. So um, I have three or four case studies I want to show with you guys. It's coming your way, Cassie. Hey. 
So the first project I'm going to talk about is for Pennsylvania DOT. We did uh, a couple years back. It had about uh, 17 feet of cover on it. And uh, it was about 132 inch uh, multi-plate uh, pipe that had uh, severe deterioration in the invert and some shape movement as well. Uh, so it was one of those things where the, the pipe had been deflected so much under load, under dead and live load over the years, that they were struggling to find a solution uh, to fit through the host pipe and to make it uh, work hydraulically for the civil consultant that was working on it with Pentel. Um, so I went out, I flew, I, I live in Maine, I flew out to Pittsburgh. And we went and looked at this pipe together, me and the PennDOT district. Um, and we were able to, over the course of about 12 months, work on um, a sizing and an appropriate uh, culvert length and everything to get the liner to fit. And sure enough, we were able to write a provisional spec for a pen dot because um, at the time it wasn't a Bulletin 15 product yet, which is sort of their qualified products list. It has since been accepted by pen dot under their qualified products list. So that makes things a bit easier um, from that perspective. Once again, 108 inch pipe and actually most of the time Duramax is a nominally sized pipe, meaning we have an ID and an OD that we list on our brochure. However, 108 inch uh, because of the, it was one of the newer diameters that Contact was uh, able to uh, produce, manufacture. So it actually is a true 108 inch ID. And uh, as you can see from the sample, when I say constructability wise and having it fit, your pipe wall thickness is, is not super, super thick here. So you're only talking maybe a little over an inch in a lot of the profiles. Um, so that allows you to fit some very large pipe inside of host pipes. The other thing I'll tell you is that it's extremely lightweight. Um, example, a 120 inch pipe, that's a 10 foot ID pipe, only weighs uh, just shy of 100 pounds of linear foot, I believe. So it's very, very lightweight, which makes it easy for, um, fewer pieces of equipment, lighter weight equipment, construction equipment. And when you're talking about approach and how you're gonna do your lay down area for constructability purposes, Duramax works great in those instances. Um, Ryan, you may have touched on this, but I'll reiterate, typical lay lengths are 24 footers and 14 footers for Duramax. Um, they do offer bell and spigot connections up to 84 inch in diameter. Once we go above 84, cause there's also 96, 108 and 120 inch. Um, then that becomes an internal band at the joints. So we would bring in individual segments of pipe of Duramax, let's say for 108 inch, you put an internal expansion band in, you grout the annular space, and then you can even have that band be permanent if you want and make that a permanently placed band, or you can take the band out afterwards and all you have is a butt to butt joint after the fact. A uh, question that just came in. Yeah. The, the, the lightweightness, of it, are there any disadvantages to having it so lightweight? Yeah, so Ryan hit the, the nail on the head with the grout. Uh, you know how I've, in the last four segments that we've done together, we constantly talk about a low density cellular co uh, concrete, right, for annular space. That's often a preference of mine. Uh, and the specific reason is because it is, because of its lightweight nature, it doesn't present as much uplift or buoyancy force on any style of liner pipe, whether it be metal, Duramax, snap tight, what have you, A2, right? But if um, if there is going to be a heavier density cementitious grout uh, in there, uh, the hold down practices do have to be considered uh, quite extensive, right? So you may want um, some pipe jacks in there, and this is true for any pipe, metal pipe as well. But um, it's just something that you know myself and Ryan and you, we all specialize in. It's something we need to talk about with the engineer and the contractor when we do our shop drawings. Um, but that's really it. It's not a negative. It's just, hey, something to be aware of when when we're installing that pipe. All right. So I'll I had you send it back to you. <laughs> that's all right. I was just trying to improvise here. So this is that project here. Again, 132 inch. You can see the invert was um, in pretty rough shape of the host multiplate, and uh, it had about 17 feet of cover. And we could have gone 120 inch here because we do offer 120 inch Duramax. But because of the deflections in the ceiling and the pipe movement over the years, we ended up selecting 108 inch. Moving on, uh, same project, uh, but we talked about a lot of these things while we were trying to figure out our technical difficulties. Um, grout ports, that's one of the things uh, Ryan and you touched on for A2. 
This is something that I often do uh, for Duramax is we'll put in grout ports and grout port patterns can change uh, depending on who the installer is and what their preferences are and what type of grout they're gonna be using. Um, but I, I always say the more grout ports, the merrier, because if anything else, it just gives you more opportunity to open up a grout port and see how the grout's flowing in the annular space. Um, once again, very lightweight and strong pipe can be direct buried just like the A2 can under a deep cover. Uh, this was probably one of my very first experiences with Duramax uh, for the town of Ithaca, New York, just outside of the campus there, uh, where we had an 84-inch old boilerplate culvert uh, in the ground. Ryan, I'm sure you've seen plenty of these. There's a lot of these oh, in yeah. New York. <laughs> and uh, that particular boilerplate actually had a box culvert extension off of it. What made that even more challenging was there was about a four or five degree bend after you got to the separate material there going through that culvert. And you can see this is the excessive uh, rock head wall and they had some slope failure in here uh, from sinkholes and things of that nature. So uh, we ended up, a uh, contract, friendly contractor of ours ended up pulling about uh, 110 feet of 72 inch uh, Duramax through here um, and just had a basically a winch system where he was able to pull it on a, uh, a winch on the butt end of the culvert and he had a pull plate here. So a steel pull plate that basically matched the outside diameter of the Duramax pipe. Uh, and he was able to get that to pull through. No problem through the bend. Uh, and the job went very well. The town of Ithaca has, um, has done very well with that culvert. They haven't had any more sinkholes ab above grade. So we, we know the pipe and the, and the grout are holding up very well. Here's some more pictures. You can see actually how you can see the winch cable here and how because of that angle it was off to the side. Here's his winch set up off the head wall here. And there's actually some two by fours he hilty nailed into the side wall of the culvert to actually guide the Duramax around the four degree bend. So that was helpful. You can see how tight some of this was in here. So again, with the wall thickness being what it is, it made it a lot easier to fit that in hydraulically and get the town what they needed to meet their flow requirements. This one was a, a pretty large project, probably one of the uh, namesake projects we're very proud of up here in the Northeast with Duramax. Um, there was a ton of issues for MassDOT and they actually, the Massachusetts DOT actually issued an emergency work order via official letter um, and we were able to get in and uh, fix basically a 78 inch um, culvert that went underneath both north and southbound of Interstate 91, as well as uh, the railroad. And this hole, uh, no joke, was big enough. You could, if you fell in it, you'd probably be up to your chest in it. So it was a pretty sizable hole towards the outlet. And this exits to the Connecticut River. So for those of you who are familiar with uh, Western Massachusetts, the Springfield area, this is just north of that. Um, went underneath a giant uh, parking lot for a strip mall. There was a big Y supermarket grocery store there, all kinds of infrastructure in and around the area. Um, just so happened that the, the contractor, uh, you can see actually, if I back up, forgive me, you had some backfill falling through here, sinkhole issues on, on the uh, surface on the shoulder. Um, Unfortunately, with the way permitting and everything else worked, uh, this job was supposed to start in October. It didn't start until late December, I believe, right around the holidays. So we got in there uh, right or, you know, we got out of there just at the end of February. Or, uh, I believe it was the end of February when it was all done. I was able to snipe this photo here with the railroad going over it. And they were just about done with the reline at that time. Um, once again, Grout ports, pipe jacks, and low density cellular concrete was utilized to fill the annular space. There was several hundred yards of annular space. Uh, as you can imagine, 550 feet of 78 inch uh, plate being filled with a 66 inch pipe. There's a lot of void there and those sinkholes. Um, being that this was right at the Connecticut River, literally the week they finished building their downstream head wall, the river rose up on them. So they got up, they got out of there right in time, the contractor. Here are the pipe jacks you can see. Those pipe jacks go right up through the ceiling of the liner pipe and pin into the host pipe. So it holds the pipe down from flotation. Uh, you can see a grout port here 
And you can also see a lateral cut in. So we can cut in laterals on Duramax. It certainly makes things easier when it's a uh, man size entry uh, to go ahead and cut a hole and just weld, finish it off a little weld and we can stub in lateral connections. So those can remain active for folks who are curious. Don, believe... we, have a really, go uh, we have a really good question that just came in. Can you yep. couple Duramax to steel pipe in a siphon situation to address stream angles in a siphon? Hmm. I would imagine there's a way to do it. Ryan, do you have a good answer for that? We, we've actually done it, um, mm. not necessarily in a reline application, but we have done right. it with new pipe. Reline would be a little more challenging, but um, it, I would think we could do it offhand. Uh, would need to know more about the the project and the existing and all that type of stuff to give you a, a full answer. But yeah, we've we've done it in the past and and uh, we've Livonia is a little bit that way. We've done some bevels there. Uh, yeah. Another another show picture that Don, uh, Don's going to give you. So yeah. it depends on the severity of the angle. Well, Ryan, I know the gentleman asking the question. I work with him on other projects. Um, he knows contact products, so I'll we'll get on a call with him and talk to him about it. Okay. Um, another question came in. Can you tell us more about the clamps inside, outside, and the sizes of use? So by clamps, I'm assuming they're meaning the bands. Um, and so I'll take it to mean that. Uh, so the yeah. band, so going back a step, if it's 30 through 84 inch diameter, then there's a bell and spigot connection, pretty traditional bell and spigot, double fluted gasket, what have you. They go together very well, meets the ASTM D3212 um which can be used for storm or sewer right and we use it sometimes in reline but not not as often as one might think there's a slight adjustment in the od versus the wall of the pipe itself unlike the a2 where the bell or snap type for example where the bell and the um the spigot are the same diameter roughly um so that is should be considered when you're looking at a host pipe and figuring out whether or not it's going to fit can you actually have a bell duramax uh, connection on there or will it prevent prevent you from doing it because of the pinch point. Um, oftentimes I'll use just plain Enduramax. So once again, just butt it up against each other and then you go in with an inside band and those can just be temporary internal expansion bands, which we often, Ryan and I will use steel and those bands just go in, they hug up against the ID of that joint. Only when the grout's going in place, the grout cures, you collapse the band, you take it out. That's one option. Or you can do a permanent band where you go in with some flat gasket material like a quarter inch or what have you, HDB, and you can weld that permanently in place. You can screw it down with a, uh, a neoprene gasket if you want. There's all kinds of ways to skin that cat. But mm -hmm. uh, I find that you know if you, you have a nice butt-to-butt -butt connection, the flow is really nice and smooth, you can take that band, internal expansion band, right out of there after you're done grouting, and it's just a connection there. Once again, if the host pipe allows for it, Cassie, and it won't be a pinch point concern for you when you're slipping that pipe through there, bell and spick, it would probably be the most easiest thing to do because you're, you know, you're eliminating all that post work of having to do bands inside the pipe. So if the bell, if the bell will fit inside a host for 30 through 84 inch, that's, that's definitely a good solution. Any more questions on that or? So far, uh, um, just got another one. You showed pipe jacks to reduce flotation in the annular void when grouting. What is the bottom load spreading technique used to eliminate puncture and or undulation between the jacks? So what will happen most often than not is, and, and the commonality is about eight to 10 foot in uh, linear foot of spread between the grout ports and the ceiling and jacks. So there's about 10 feet there, right? Um, plus or minus. And then we'll put a four by four or six by six. Oftentimes we'll suggest to the contractor. So your pipe jacks actually come down and on the bottom inside the liner pipe on the invert is a four by four or six by six piece of lumber where the pipe jacks come into contact. So it, I actually like it because it does a good job of holding that entire length down versus just a point load somewhere. You had a good picture of that, I think on your last slide. Yeah, let me back up. Can you show that one where you have the jacks in there? Yeah, there you go. So there's your four by four, and there's your contact. The bi this is a bypass pipe where they're just pumping water through. So essentially, you have a a continuous beam running along mm -hmm. the bottom. 
and then exactly. more, but but a new one up, you know, four by four or six by six up to each other, you know, you can just space those apart by about a foot maximum. Okay, that answers my question so far. All right, great. No, these are great questions. I appreciate it. Um, so Livonia, this one's a little bit different, and Ryan and I wanted to showcase this one. I actually was not directly involved. Suffice it to say that I know the installer who put this in quite well. Uh, he's a colleague of ours. And this pipe was um, an RCP, a reinforced concrete host pipe that had several host conditions that were of concern. Joints were coming apart. There was some spalling in areas on the uh, RCP and just some critical infrastructure in and around the uh, Commerce Center there. Uh, so you can see in the notes, Amazon distribution was just uh, was right up there and we definitely want to keep Bezos happy. So you can see some of the, the host pipe concerns. Um, one thing you should note as I go through these next few slides is how much water you can see at the joints. This is basically the, the theme of the story here. Uh, you, so you can see some of the joints were mudded previously and invert corrosion, things of that nature. Uh, there were areas that were in some spots greater than one inch deep. So water being the theme here, um, and what oftentimes can be a, a topic of conversation for the three of us and annular space grouting is what happens if that hose pipe is uh, super saturated and has a bunch of groundwater penetrating through it during the grouting process? Definitely presents some challenges to us, right? And uh, can become a, lot, a lot bigger of a scope of work for us or a topic of conversation. Um, you're seeing here the bulkhead that was built between the host and the liner pipe, and then how many vent ports. I, I like what the contractor did here, because the more vent ports, the merrier. They had valves on here, so they could turn things on and off. And he actually, I'll show you here, he labeled the lengths for which his, his grout ports and vent ports went into the pipe. So he knew this one was 399 feet, for example. He knew this one was 466, and he had various things he could plug into if he had to. So a lot of forethought and planning went into how he was going to grout this annular space. You can see how many different connections he had for injecting the grout. And once again, uh, this was a lightweight grout that was utilized. And they realized, hey, we don't want to put too much pressure on this liner pipe. We don't want to float it. We don't want to damage it. Just like any liner pipe, we never want to damage it. Um, so they, they did their due diligence, 600 foot long in some areas. So what happened was they had actually gotten a lot of the liner pipe into position and uh, come back, I think it was the next morning or over Thanksgiving break, wasn't it, Ryan? Yeah, I think you're right. Is, is how that goes. And uh, witnessed that some of the pipe had actually deflected in the ceiling. They very quickly were able to get, with context help, they were able to get some strutting in there where they were able to get that ceiling back into position. And uh, what they realized was they basically had a inundation of water uh, from the groundwater in the annular space. So they drilled some holes in the Duramax and the invert and basically bled the water out of that annular space. Um, and, and this is true for any culvert lining. If there's trapped water behind there and all of a sudden you had a three-day three -day rain event and groundwater is just coming through that hose pipe, it can present a challenge no matter what the liner pipe is. So they were able to, forgive my shameless plug there, they were able to get in there and uh, bleed all the water, grout the annular space, get the project done, and it was a fantastic success at the end of the day. Not to be said without its challenges, but uh, contractor did a fantastic job of getting all that pipe into position. That buttons up my portion. Another question for you, Don. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you answer it, even though I already think I know exactly what you're going to say. What do you do for floor spacing to center the reline to the host pipe? Say again. I'm sorry. I didn't catch the first part. What do you do for floor spacing to center the reline, the liner pipe in the host pipe? Yeah. So, my, Kathy, let's see if you guessed it. My typical answer would be, first of all, up to preference of the owner or the engineer, but usually... I would recommend that the liner pipe is as close to the invert of the host pipe because yes. usually we're trying to keep the headwater down yes. at, at the forefront of your culvert, right? Or at the inlet of your culvert. So the closer your invert of your liner is to the invert of the host pipe, the lower you've driven up your headwater elevation. Right. So right on so the bottom in, in many instances, if you can. Yeah. 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 Um, so 
I figured I knew the answer. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to give a you different answer it. than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that wraps it up. Do we have any more questions? Thank you guys for letting us go a few minutes over. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I think we figured out what we did. I'm not sure on my end, but I, I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, just to wrap things up. So Don and I are on opposite sides of the country. I know we had a lot of people in the West that I represent. We had a lot of people on the East that, sorry for the late email last night that he represents. Um, so we are independent reps for different manufacturers. Contech is one of the many products, uh, various products from Contech we represent. So if you guys are interested in these products or other Reline products that Contech represents, give us a shout. We'll put you in touch with either Ryan or the right person in your territory that can help us um, do some engineering design and spec work. And Ryan, do you have anything else on that side? No, I appreciate your time. I think any time that you're looking at a consideration, get us involved as early as you can. Um, yeah. That that way we can we can remove products from contention based on on what we know about the project. Uh, no two projects are the same, um, right? Especially in Reline. Uh, so so isn't that don't don't assume yeah. because we did something on one we would do the exact same thing on the next. So. Right. I, say get us involved early and often uh we're a free resource to you so so use it yep um and don and i are here as well like i said we work really closely with ryan and other counterparts in contact around the country so feel free to always give us a holler and we'll put you in touch with the right people get on calls and do engineering designs if we need to uh, if there are no more questions if you guys uh, missed any part of this um this will be recorded and I should have it live by the end of the day on our YouTube channel. And there will be a link in the email you get tomorrow thanking you for attending. I have a couple more Reline Live scheduled, so I'll be sending an invite out for those soon um, for February. So thank you guys so much. And this went really well, even though we had a couple of glitches, we didn't go that far over. <laughs> a lot of good questions today. Thank you guys. Yep. Thank you very thank much, you. Cassie. Thanks, Ryan. See you guys. Bye.